Well, hello, Shining Light Baptist Church. Uh, once again, Pastor Dawson here with some more encouraging stones out of the book of Joshua. Uh, the uh, COVID virus restrictions should be lifted by uh, May 15th, so we're extended 15 more days. But until then, uh, we're going to continue having devotions and having some preaching uh, by way of the Facebook and YouTube and the Shining Light Baptist Church website. So let's go ahead and get into another one of our stones in the book of Joshua. We're continuing with these discussions on the, uh, the stones in Joshua, and we're in Joshua chapter 24 and verses 26 and 27. And I want you to read with me here and see what's going on. Joshua chapter 24, and notice verse 26. Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God and took, notice this, a great stone and set it up there under an oak that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. Notice verse 27. Joshua said unto all the people, Behold, notice this stone should be a witness unto us, for it hath heard all the words of the law which he spake unto us. It shall be therefore a witness unto you, lest ye deny your God. Joshua 24, verses 26 and 27. Overcoming stones were found in chapter 4 of what God did in Israel's life. Then we looked at obedient stones. They were found in chapter number eight of what Israel now should do by way of remembering the word of God as a priority. Obligation stones are found here in chapter 24 now of what Israel committed to do as Joshua begins to close out his tenure as their leader here in Joshua chapter 24. Now, if you're anything like me, uh, when you got saved, you didn't have any obligations to the Lord in mind. Amen. I know I didn't. Uh, I looked at uh, what uh, I got from God, not what God wanted from me. And uh, obligation means this. And that's why we're calling this obligation stones. It's a course of action to which a person is morally or legally bound. Notice that. A course of action to which a person is morally or legally bound. Or in other words, I'm going to do something and I'm going to bind myself to making sure it gets done. Obligation also means this, excuse me. <clears throat> it's a duty or commitment, a duty or commitment. So you're looking at obligation as a course of action, which person is morally or legally bound, a duty or commitment. But it also means this, which I find interesting. And this is how I felt when I got saved. It's a debt of gratitude for service or favor. In other words, what someone did for you now, you're obligated to them how you feel. So a debt of gratitude for service or favor, duty or commitment, a course of action, these are obligations. And so we're looking at obligation stones here at the close of Joshua's book here, chapter 24. Notice verse 27 again in the book of Joshua. It says, And Joshua said unto all the people, Behold, this stone shall be a witness unto us. Notice, for it hath heard all the words of the Lord which he spake unto us. It shall be therefore a witness unto you. And notice the end phrase, lest ye deny your God. In other words, these obligation stones were here written as a witness to testify of their commitment to serve God, lest they deny their God. But notice what deny means. Literally means to be untrue. So lest ye be untrue to your God. It also means to disown. Lest ye disown your God. It also means to disappoint. Lest ye disappoint your God. None of us want to be disappointed. Neither do we want to disappoint uh, someone else. Uh, we don't want to disown someone. Well, sometimes we do, maybe. Uh, we don't want to be true to people. Most often we want to be true. So looking at deny, to be untrue, 
to disown, to disappoint, or to fail. Those are all definitions of this word deny. So Joshua, as he's ending the book here in chapter 24, says, I'm going to erect this stone, put it here, put the law here, and it's going to be a witness every time you see it, lest you fail your God, lest you deny your God, lest you disappoint your God, lest you be untrue or disown your God. And so Joshua here is reminding Israel that they have an obligation to serve their God, the Lord, since they chose him and he chose them in their covenant and their commitment. Notice the obvious choice here in verse number 14. So let's backtrack a little bit and see why Joshua is writing this and erecting these obligation stones. Verse number 24, and this is the obvious choice. I want to call this the obvious choice. Notice verse 14 because uh, Joshua has written to them and kind of detailed to them in verses uh, previous to this where they came from. And notice the obvious church choice in verse 14. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and truth. Pretty obvious. And uh, notice this, put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. And so verse number uh, 14 here is the obvious choice, knowing uh, and seeing what God had done in verses 1 through 10, they should serve him. And by the way, if we look at what God has done for us, we should serve him as well. He saved us. He's redeemed us. He's forgiven our sin. We have heaven. We're uh, not going to hell anymore. We have a new life. We've got uh, new liberties. And so we too should serve God. That's the obvious choice. And notice what he said. If you're going to make the obvious choice, uh, put away in uh, verse 14, uh, the strange gods and serve the true God out of an obligation of gratitude. In other words, don't serve because you have to, but serve because you want to. And that is how I felt. And that was my obligation. I felt obligated because of all the sins that had been forgiven uh, and what God had done for me. And so the obvious choice then is to know and what God has done and serve him out of a position of uh, gratitude. And that is the obligation that we have. We'll see uh, verse 15 here in the next uh, segment, but just wanting us to see and understand that this obligation stone that we have uh, is a course of action that we should be morally bound to or legally bound to. We should have this out of a duty or commitment, but most of all, we should have it out of a debt of gratitude, this obligation, because of what God did for us. Joshua was looking back over their life and saying, because of what God did for you, you ought to serve the Lord. And as we go through the crises of the COVID, we have a God that we should serve and we should serve him because we want to. And we should serve in sincerity and in truth, meaning what we say and uh, being really uh, faithful in what we do. And so sincerity and truth, God sees, God knows, and God loves, and he desires for us to serve him in such a way. So until we meet again, uh, let's make sure we keep our heads up our eyes up, our prayers up, and our knees down in prayer to Almighty God for us and for one another. Thank you for your prayers for us. Thank you for your faithful stewardship and continue to the next time.